to read audio quickly from memory in PD and perform really cool transformations on it, we're going to use tables and arrays to store audio and um, a sawtooth wave to read back audio from the tables uh, using an object called tabread4. We could use readSF to read audio into PD uh, from an audio file, but it's limited because it'll just stream it off disk, and when it's done, we have to load it again. By using tables, we get quicker access and better results. So I've got a patch here with DSP on and off, and as well the final gain stage going into the DAC and a volume slider. That's a V slider reading from 0 to 1. So first thing I'll need to do is create two arrays. Choose Put Array. Call this one Channel L. It is case sensitive. Then copy this, paste, and make the other Channel R. Now I'll create an interface to browse for files on my hard drive. So make a bang, and then create the open panel object. And this will open up a GUI that'll let me choose a file off the hard drive. The result from open panel is sent to a message box that has the following contents. Read space dash resize space dollar sign one space channel L space channel R. So it's going to send a message that basically says read the contents from open panel, resize the table, and read the contents into channel L and channel R. This needs to be sent out into an object called sound filer. Okay, and sound filer is going to spit out the total size of the sound file in terms of samples. So we'll create a number box, right click it, choose properties. We'll change the width to 12 because the number is going to be pretty large. Now we'll create math, XPR, 44100 divided by dollar sign F1. So we need to take the total size of the sound file and divide the sample rate, which is 441. And before we continue, we're going to create a send sample size and connect that to this number box. We're going to use that later. Okay, so now the result here is going to give us the rate at which we're going to need to read this uh, these tables with phaser. So we'll take this number box and duplicate it. And then create phaser tilde. Connect the output of the expression object and put it into phaser. So now we're going to generate a sawtooth wave at this rate, which we'll see in a minute. And the output of phaser is going to go into a multiplication audio object. And the cold inlet will be the sample size. So receive sample size. And that's being sent from SoundFiler. Okay, so what this is going to do is it is going to uh, ramp up numbers that is then going to be fed into tab read four space channel L. So finally, we're going to read the tables. There's a lot of indexes on these tables because the sound is pretty big. Okay, and then pipe that out here. Change the last letter to R. Make sure you do check your case. It is case sensitive. And finally, we can output from tab read into the final gain stage. Leaving some space because we're going to eventually adjust this patch to read the current position. Okay, so that's a lot of work to get the sound files into these tables and read them, but it's well worth it. Okay, lock the patcher, click the bang, and choose your sound file. So I've got this guitar riff. It's a total of about 650,000 samples large, and it's going to be read at a rate of 0 0.0678, 478 uh, with the phaser. That's the um, cycles per second. Doesn't quite make much sense, I know, but essentially 
Remember that phasor is a, is a line from 0 to 1 that's linear. And so there's 650,000 indexes here. So we need to read through all of them. And that's what is happening here with this multiplication object. Then we're reading here using tab read 4 and sending out to the final gain stage. Turn on the DAC and slowly turn up the volume. So this riff is a loop, but we don't quite know where, we're, where we are in the table. So now we'll code a component of this patch to read the current position. So we'll make this move down, and that's going to come out of this multiplication object. So to do this, we'll use an object called snapshot. And this is a current, um, it, it's, as the name suggests, a snapshot of where the sound is in time. And we'll use Metro to take the snapshot. Okay, so it's not a continuously reading object. We need to bang snapshot to take a picture. Think of it as a camera. A toggle to turn the Metro on. So we're gonna read it pretty fast, 50 milliseconds. And then the output of snapshot is going to be a rather large number. And what we'll do here is we'll divide the output by the total sample size to generate a number between 0 and 1. 0 will be the beginning of the file, 1 will be the end. Our sample size Okay, and then another number atom. Okay, now we'll turn, well the DAC is already on, turn on snapshot, and sample size has, we need to send it again because we created this after it was populated, so we're just going to really quickly move up and down this number box. Okay. Oh, I lost the original. There we go. Okay, so now you see from 0 to 1, uh, this is basically telling us where we're at in the sound file. And so we'll create an H slider over here, and we're going to send these values into this H slider. Right-click the H slider, choose Properties, make it go from 0 to 1, and we'll make the width 195. That's roughly the same width as the audio file. We're just visually lining it up. And now pipe the output into the slider. So now we can see where we're at in this particular file. Turn it up. Some other things we can do, we can uh, play with the rate at which this is um, playing back, and that's going to be the rate of phaser, which is the left inlet. So we'll create an H slider. Right click it and choose properties. Output values, let's say from negative one to one, and choose okay. We'll go ahead and put it into a number box so we can see the results. And then send this into the uh, hot inlet of phaser. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a message that is 0 0.0678478. It's the same as the result of the math. And that'll bring it back to the original speed because it's going to get crazy in a minute. So this is playback speed. Okay, I'll bang this. Okay. And now turn it up.
Okay, so that's that's a pretty cool um, thing to do. You can change the playback speed. It it is akin to essentially taking a turntable and spinning it really fast. Um, that's what we're doing as we're making it playback faster, but we're also changing the pitch. We're not going to look at separating those out in this particular movie, but that can be done in PD. We can also affect where it will start from, and that's done using the phase argument of phaser. So now we'll take this part, push it down, give us some space. Okay, so now if we create a message box of zero, then that will say restart the phase at phase zero, which is going to be the beginning. Okay, so now if I create a message box of, let's say, one, I'm going to restart the phase at one. Okay, so that's also going to be the beginning, because really we're going from zero to one across the table. So now what we need to do is create a value in between. So let's say 0.5. Not going to quite be the middle. Okay, so the phase argument lets us say uh, where in the table we're going to start the file from. Okay, so from 0 to 1, 0 0.5 is about the middle. And if we wanted to stop playback, then what we would do is create a message box over here and set the um, cycles per second to 0. That'll immediately stop playback. And if we wanted to start it, then we would send the playback speed of the original uh, rate. Okay, so if we sent a 1, okay, so this is where conventional logic might get the better of you. We're used to 1 and 0 being true and false, but here this is actually feeding the cycles per second argument. By saying play it back at 0 cycles per second, then nothing's happening. But if we say play back at 1 cycle per second, then we're increasing the rate. So actually, we would need to send back the playback speed of 0 0.078, etc. And so what we're really doing is we're pausing it. We're not really stopping it in the conventional sense that we stop and it goes back to the beginning. That would involve essentially a trigger that would first send it back to, um, actually first stop it and then send it back to the original phase, which is zero. Okay, so now we can start it. And this would stop it, and it brings it all the way back to the beginning. We could start it again. Or we could pause it. And start it back. So you can see that uh, this is a, a pretty a flexible way to read back audio within PD. We don't have to reload the file if we don't want to. Um, and we can have access to it, and this is actually the foundation to doing cooler things like granular synthesis, which we'll get to in later movies. Um, it is pretty complicated in that there are a lot of different steps you have to take, but the results are well worth it.